What did the day-to-day -day ministry of the woman deacon consist in? Why was she so important for the parish? The woman deacon could take the Christian message to homes where men could not enter. She instructed new catechumens, anointed them and immersed them at baptism, looked after the poor and the sick, and helped families at funerals. Women deacons visited pagan homes and the women's quarters there. Women deacons would also stand at the church door during the weekly service to welcome any strangers and visitors and guide them to their seats during official worship. In today's church too, many services for women and among women can only be exercised by women. During the first millennium, the sacrament of baptism enjoyed a far more prominent place in Christian life than it has in our own day. Through baptism, new believers entered the church. And during the middle of the first millennium, thousands and thousands of adults were baptized every year. Catechumens went through a long period of preparation, instructions, prayers, exorcisms, fasting and penance, even examinations and personal guidance. Here, women deacons played a key role, especially in accompanying the women. A woman deacon was indispensable at the baptism of a female catechumen because persons receiving baptism had to be naked. The woman deacon would take her into the baptistry itself. There she would help the catechumen strip herself of all her clothes and ornaments. She would untie the woman's hair. Then she would anoint every part of her body including the most intimate parts, to ensure, as ancient texts tell us, that nothing partaking of an alien spirit should descend with her into the water of second birth. For the anointing was an exorcism, an expulsion of the devil, implying a healing from all evil related to the body. The anointing of a woman in this intimate way could only be done with modesty by another woman, as ancient sources point out. Moreover, since anointing was such a key ceremony within holy baptism itself, it required the service of a woman minister, a deacon, who had been ordained for this function. Ancient baptistries were like small ponds sunk into the pavement with steps leading into the water. The area around the font was screened off so that the baptizing deacon and catechumen enjoyed some privacy. The woman deacon would lead the catechumen down the steps from the west to the east so that the catechumen faced east. In the middle the font was about waist deep. The woman deacon too would descend into the font. For men this was a function which the main baptizer, the bishop or the priest, would do himself, namely to immerse the catechumen three times using 
a Trinitarian formula. For women, the immersion was done by the woman deacon, while the baptismal formula was usually spoken by the bishop or priest who stood outside the baptistry or behind a curtain inside the baptistry. Early Christian communities were much concerned about the socially deprived in their world. Starving families, migrants without a home, teenagers looking for a job. It was the deacons, both men and women, who were mainly in charge of this social service of the time. And care for sick women in their homes was another crucial task for the woman deacon. Literary records tell us that this often involved washing the patients, giving them medicine and offering them comfort and support. Women deacons would take Holy Communion to women who could not come to church. At times they may have heard confessions, and they certainly performed the holy anointing of the sick. We are told that women deacons assisted families in prepared deceased women for their Christian burial. They would wash them, anoint them, and dress them in fresh clothes. They would pray with the deceased person's family and help them cope with their loss. Mortality was high at the time. The diaconate of women petered out around the 11th century for a number of reasons. Adult conversions had become less frequent. And the prejudice against women's monthly periods took over. Menstruation was considered to pollute everything. Women were kept away from the sanctuary and from the baptistry for fear they might pollute sacred things. Read more about this on our website. Our research has identified more than 120 active women deacons by name. If each one stands for 500 whose names have been forgotten in the course of time, the first millennium must have seen more than 50,000 ordained women deacons serving throughout the Christian world. The implications of this cry out for the Church today. The undeniable fact that women have ministered as ordained deacons in the past, surely means that they can be and should be ordained in our time too.